What is it that happens between the original ID and the eventual realization of a product on the market? The product we're talking about here today is a consumer luminaire, or in normal language, a lamp. Between the value proposition and the eventual product, there's the MPI process, the new product introduction process. And in there, something magic happens. That is the design phase. The phase in which you turn something theoretical into something visual and tangible. The value proposition and the design briefing are based on deep understanding of user needs. Therefore, we conduct lots of user research, market research. We look at social cultural trends. We look at lifestyle trends. We learn about how light influences our well-being and so forth. Furthermore, you need a good understanding of the economic context and the industrial context of the company. You're probably going to work with a set of predefined components such as LEDs, drivers, coolings, what have you, all sorts of electronics. Are there emerging technologies or emerging opportunities for the near future? All things you have to take into account before you can embark on the actual design phase. The first phase in the design process is the ideation phase. One of the tools that we use very often is the sketchbook and a simple pen um, because visual thinking is a very strong tool. When you're making drawings, you come up with ideas that you're not really aware of yet. Bring people together also in workshop helps because you might see something that I'm drawing that I'm not perceiving in my own drawing or I might interpret your drawing in a different way. Um, mocking up, building very small models with paper even, doesn't matter, just create the first ideas, come up with as many as possible to get a broad view on the topic. Once we've presented the initial product ideas, we move on to the next stage. A selection is made and we start working on detailing those ideas into actual product designs. Therefore, we use CAD models. CAD is the first thing that helps us to get a, a 3D evaluation of the product because we can actually build it and look around it as if it were a tangible product. Once the CAD model is finished, we render it so that we get an idea of the, of the materials and finishes. But we also start making prototypes. We do it here in the model shop, which we have on site, and which we can use a lot of different materials, but we also make a lot of use of 3D printing. And 3D printing allows us to, to build models really fast. Once these are built, we make use of these facilities we have mock-up rooms which simulate living rooms, for example. We install luminaires and we use them ourselves to get a quick first evaluation of what the light effect is. When you've decided which product concept is being put forward, a project team is assembled and it's the designer's function to transfer the project to the project team. Other functions are in the project team such as engineering, quality, what have you. So it's our role then to make sure that whomever works on it further on in the flow gets the initial ID and gets the design value that's in the product. Once transferred, we keep on supporting the whole project team throughout the whole industrialization phase. There's a second sort of flow, which is a bit more organic and which is extremely good for, if, for doing peak designs, a design in which every detail is new in the product. In that sense, it's more organic, so it's not as structured, and you start working in a project team right from the start. So you can do multiple loops and iterations right from the start, combining design, engineering, quality, thermal, electronic aspects, what have you. So in the end, there's no single clue or no single answer to what happens in this process. We designers, we believe that going through the process, the magic happens, turning the original theoretical ID into something visual and something tangible at the end. If that ain't magic, I don't know. <laughs>